Welcome to another episode of Video Game Collection, my live stream series that I've been doing for the past few months. Chris, the old ass retro gamer here. Uh, sorry, I had my microphone on mute for a second. That's why there was no sound at the beginning. Um, today is going to be part two of my Sony PlayStation 3 collection. Last week I talked, well, I have on my shelving unit. Uh, the areas where you can store games are maybe yay big. Uh, and I talked about the first three sections of my collection. Now we're talking about the final three sections of my collection. So I don't have a huge, gigantic, massive uh, PlayStation 3 collection like I do for my like Xbox 360. So this is probably going to be a decently short live stream. I mean, I think the last one was just shy of an hour and a half. Uh, so, but doesn't mean it doesn't have, I don't have lots and lots of games to talk about here. Uh, so once again, I say this in every live stream that I do, this is not to brag. I'm not doing this to show off all these games I have and you don't type of thing. Uh, this is basically just a catalog and have a visual reference of everything that's in my collection in case there's a disaster. Like, you know, it's a fire or get robbed or the floor collapses or something like that. So I have like something to show the insurance company to say, look, I owned all these things. You've seen it in my hands, that sort of thing. So, uh, PlayStation three have not played my PlayStation three in the longest time. I've actually had the console in my closet for probably the last year and a half. Uh, once I bought my, uh, PS four pro, I want to say, Needed to make room on my little shelving unit that I have my consoles on. So that one and the the Xbox 360, the Wii U, and the uh, PlayStation 3, they, they had to go. Uh, so um, now that I've been talking about all these games, I've been getting back in the mood to play them just like my 360. If you watch the live stream that I did on Tuesday where it was my recent pickup video for the month of March, you saw that I bought a new Xbox 360, a very cool one at that, and that got me back into playing my 360 games that I have in my collection. Well, talking about some of these has made me say, like, you know, I never did get around to playing that one. I should probably start doing that now. And starting tonight, I'm on vacation for the next week and a half, so it's going to happen. So let's talk about some of these games, shall we? So starting off, we got a franchise, a really old franchise of first-person shooters, uh, that tried to make a resurgence during this generation, and it kind of failed, I want to say. Uh, but we're talking Medal of Honor. This is the limited edition that comes with the Medal of Honor Frontline remaster, as well as a, a beta invitation for Battlefield 3. And its follow-up Medal of Honor Warfighter, which I just talked about on Tuesday in the pickup video. Uh, this is the Project Honor edition, plus Walmart exclusive documentary uh, this is a, this has a Battlefield 4 beta on it. So first-person shooters trying to copy Call of Duty Modern Warfare's MO, uh, updating it so they're not about World War II first-person shooting anymore. Now it is about modern-day war stuff. And uh, I've only played the first one briefly, and I enjoyed what I played. I mean, it's not the greatest first-person shooter, but it's not terrible either. And I recently just got... Warfighter, so I haven't had a chance to play that yet since the PS3 is in the closet. But I liked what I saw. DICE is the company that I do believe has been making the uh, Battlefield, Star, Front, Star Wars Battlefront games for the current generation, which I enjoyed in single player, <laughs> not in multiplayer all that much. But whatever, they're not terrible, but the franchise kind of died with those. They have not made a uh, Medal of Honor game since. Call of Duty kind of took over from Medal of Honor's popularity when the Modern Warfare games came out and Medal of Honor, or nah, sorry, Call of Duty took over the first person shooter war games. Uh, Medal of Honor used to be the one you took, uh, that you would go to, but Call of Duty took it over and then Medal of Honor tried to reclaim it and didn't do too well. Anyway, repeating myself. Next up is Mercenaries 2 World in Flames. This is an open world game. Uh, the original one was also open world, but not huge. I have that for the original Xbox. Uh, the sequel I was not very fond of when it first came out. I really enjoyed the original that I played back in the PS2, Xbox, uh, GameCube days. And uh, I was really looking forward to Mercenaries 2. But when I picked this up, I started playing it. And this was like in 2007 or whatever when it came out. It was pretty early on. Let me see. 2008. Okay. Uh, but I remember I bought it like day one. Brought it home, started playing it, and I just could not get into it. That was when I started to realize I don't like uh, open world games. 
Uh, I started to really like lose my interest in them completely. Nowadays, yeah, I'm all about them. Back then, I just like I was like, no, I just want a linear adventure. Just take me on a on a trajectory that's already predetermined. Don't let me explore and figure out things on my own. Just I want to be told where to go. Nowadays, I I really like the freedom to do what I want because you know you can either play the story mode or or the storyline exclusively, or you can just go off and do all these extra things, whatever. So I need to give this game a second chance. But it's a third person action open world game. It's pretty fun, from what I'm told. <laughs> Uh, my friends that really enjoyed that game also back in the day, uh, they enjoyed the first one. They told me that that one was fantastic too, but I was just kind of like, eh. Pick this up of all places at a, um, well, actually, no, I didn't. My friends picked it up for me because they texted me and said, do you have this? They were at a five below. Uh, the first time I've ever set foot in a five below was probably a month ago. <laughs> I've never been inside one of those because I always assumed it was a clothing store. Um, or like a, a store that kids would go to or whatever. So I never set foot in there, but my friends had gone in there and they're like, Hey, do you have this? And I was like, no, actually I don't. And they're like, well, it's here at this, you know, five below for like a five bucks. I was like, you like, you want it? I'm like, sure. Metal Gear Rising. Worst subtitle ever. Revengeance. What the hell? <laughs> uh, this was by Platinum Games, people that make Bayonetta and... I remember downloading the demo and absolutely going like, whoa, this is way too fast. I cannot keep up with what is going on. That is the way Platinum Games does their games. Everything is just super fast paced and frantic and hectic and psychotic. Uh, but you play as Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 2. And he's basically completely cybernetic now and going on a killing spree. <laughs> and I still need to play it. It's still sealed. Uh, like I said, I only played the demo when it first came out, and I was like, what is this? I don't even know. But speaking of Metal Gear Solid, we have the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection, 1987 to 2012. Here's the actual game that goes inside this slip. And uh, this is the... I don't know if it's considered a collector's edition or what. Well, the Legacy Collection, whatever. Uh, it comes with like this art book. That is all about everything Metal Gear in chrono chronological order. Some Japanese info, whatnot. And the game itself is just chock full of like almost every Metal Gear game ever made. And I wanted to get this because I don't have a lot of the Metal Gear games except for the PS2 and the Xbox ones and this. And everything past that. But like when it comes to like the NES and all that kind of stuff, I don't have it. But there was a lot of games released for like the MSX that we never got over here in the U.S. on this compilation, too. Excuse me. Uh, we have the original Metal Gear. I'm not sure if that's the MSX version or the NES version. Probably the MSX one. But we do have the sequel to the MSX one, which is the MSX version called Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Uh, we got Snake's Revenge over here, which is not considered part of the franchise from what I remember. Then we have Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid VR Missions, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, which is a PSP game, Metal Gear Solid Band Destiny, or Des no, it's so small print, Band Desin Destiny, okay, and Metal Gear Solid 2 Band Dest Destiny, I don't know what those are, <laughs> couldn't tell you. Uh, but, like, the thing is, it's, like, it's on two discs. And that is pretty awesome that you get a compilation with all that stuff on it. So, yes, please. Saw that at a... I, got, like, I remember watching Grimsy42 talking about how much he wanted it. And then he finally found it. And he was, like, all over the moon. And it took him forever to get to the point where he could find it. Or find a place that had it. And then, like, two weeks later, I go to a GameStop. And it's sitting there slapping me in the face for, like, three bucks. Or, no, probably ten bucks. But I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, still haven't played this yet, but I got this for like $5 off of Amazon, and I never heard of it before, but it's by Square Enix, so could it really be that bad? I don't know. Depends. I haven't played it yet. Uh, but it's called Mind Jack, and it just looks cyberpunk AF. And I love me some cyberpunk, so I'm all about it. And it just it says on the back, hack or be hacked, AD 2031, a radical technology is hacking into the minds of men and into machines. Instantly turning allies into enemies. As a government agent, you must unravel a dark conspiracy to use this technology to keep society from slipping into chaos. 
and it looks like a third-person, like, cover-based shooter with, like, a hacking mechanic, kind of like the way Syndicate works, uh, which is pretty cool. I like that idea a lot, and cyberpunk is my one of my favorite science fiction subgenres, so I was all over that. I might play that this week. I haven't, uh, like I said, I need to plug in my PlayStation 3 again. Mortal Kombat, the reboot. Actually, it's Mortal Kombat 9. Um, I was unemployed when this came out, but I made damn sure that I had some money on hand so I could pick this up because, like I've always said, since the beginning of my channel, Mortal Kombat is my thing. Uh, I absolutely love this franchise, and there was no way, not even unemployment, was going to stop me from playing this. So I made damn sure that I had this. And uh, it was pretty fantastic at the time. It was like... Mortal Kombat was kind of on the outs at that point in time because of Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, which was which is considered Mortal Kombat 8. Um, this was the first Mortal Kombat game to come out on this generation, and everyone was looking forward to it, but wasn't like a fatality at all. And has my thing frozen? Oh, I guess not. Looked like it had frozen. Anyway, just my computer catching up. Anyway, um, so I bought this day one, and I was like, yes, 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 give it to me. Batman and Scorpion in the same game? Please. And I played it, and I enjoyed it. It has two separate story modes, which is kind of cool. You can play through the Mortal Kombat story, which intersects with the DC one, and then you can also play through the DC storyline, which intersects with the Mortal Kombat one. So you get to see both sides of the story, which is really fantastic. The fighting is fine, but you can see it was a warm-up for things to come because the PlayStation 2 Xbox era Mortal Kombat games like left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth because they decided to fully go 3D and the sidestepping and all that kind of stuff really didn't work all that well as far as I was concerned because I do not like Mortal Kombat 4. And even though uh, Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon were, a, were improvements over that, it still didn't feel like Mortal Kombat because all the stupid crap they were mixing and everything. Well, this one was supposed to bring it back to simplicity, but it's having it be 2D. And it was good, but it could have been a hell of a lot better. And But toning it down just killed everyone's enthusiasm for it. But I still enjoyed it regardless, even though I don't consider it a very good Mortal Kombat game. But this was the one that brought it back to what it was supposed to be. Completely 2D now, but with high-res graphics you know, for this generation. Uh, the fatalities were back. The x-ray attacks were added in. Those are fantastic. Um, what was it called? The uh, the crypt mode. All those different modes. There's online playing modes and all that. But to completely 100% this game, you really had to grind like a mother. And I, I hated that aspect of it. I was recently just watching The Completionist talk about this one. He you know played it to completion to 100% it. And he says it took him so much longer than it should have. Like, he had to just leave the place, the, like, I think he played it on the 360. In order to get a specific trophy, you have to play for a certain amount of hours in, like, a versus games, or in versus games. And he basically just started a versus game and left the Xbox 360 on for, like, three days on his desk in order to just get that achievement. That's crazy. Uh, but this is absolutely fantastic. Mortal Kombat 9 is great. It kind of reboots the series because the storyline had gotten so freaking convoluted. Uh, basically, it goes back to the events of the first, second, and third games to tell them from the point of views of all these different characters if you play the story mode, which is great. Absolutely love it. Love it! Although my favorite ones come on the next generation, the current generation. Uh, here we have Motorstorm and Motorstorm Apocalypse. I had the original Motorstorm back when it was first released, and it's a racing game that had great graphics, sound, awesome music and everything, um, psychotic racing. Uh, the only thing was it controlled kind of loosely, and it kind of annoyed me, and I ended up just selling it because I was like, you know what? I really don't feel like playing this anymore. Why does this have two manuals in it? I don't know. <laughs> So I ended up getting rid of it, and I was like, I'm done with the franchise. I never really played anything else. And then I was watching a Metal Jesus um, Hidden Gems video, and he was talking about the PSP versions of the game. And I was like, oh, yeah, that should work. That could be kind of fun. So I ended up buying some of those, and it got me back into the franchise. And that's where Apocalypse comes in. It's more of the same, just better graphics, better, uh, more vehicles to choose from, that kind of thing. So it's not too bad. Uh, this I should probably get rid of because I'm never going to play it again. So I was watching uh, Game Grinders. Uh, what? Game Grinders, yeah. 
they were playing this, and I was like, wow, that looks like a like a living cartoon. And that's exactly what they were saying while they were playing this. But it's based on an anime I've never watched. I know nothing about it. So when I was playing it, when I finally did pick up a copy of it, I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm confused. I will probably never understand what's going on unless I watch the anime, which I did not want to do. Uh, so we're talking Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Full Burst, or 3 Full Burst. That is a that is a mouthful, <laughs> but yeah, it's a fighting game. It's kind of like those Dragon Ball fighting games, or one on one fighting games that are available. Um, but the thing is, the graphics, yes, are absolutely fantastic. It looks like an anime come to life. Uh, I just don't understand what's going on whenever anything story related happens. I was just like my eyes are crossing. I was zoning out. I fell asleep while playing this. Actually, it was during like a cutscene. I passed out because I was just kind of like I don't know what's going on. I'm bored. <sighs> So, yeah, there's that. I don't know. I might keep it. I might not. Maybe one day I will finally just say, you know what, What? let's just check out this Naruto thing that is so popular. So, we never, you never know. I'm going to keep it in the collection for the time being, but there might be a point where I just go, you know what, forget that game. Uh, I picked this up. I've been looking forward to buying this for the longest time, and it took me forever to find this version for this console, but Naughty Bear, the Gold Edition. I saw this for... I think it was for the PS3 at like a half price book. So I was like, what is that? I never heard of that before. And I wanted to pick it up, but I heard that there's also a complete edition. There's gold edition. It comes with three new episodes, three new weapons and kills, 12 new costumes, and four new multiplayer modes. So I'm assuming it's a beat-em-up of some sort. I have not played it. <laughs> like most of the games in my, friend, in my uh, collection, I have not played it. But it just says here... When the other bears had a party, Naughty Bear wasn't invited. Scorned for the last time, Naughty Bear is exacting his revenge, and now they will pay with their lives. Filled with tons of mischief and over-the-top cartoon violence, one-of-a-kind adventure game is hours of fun for gamers of all levels. Okay, so it is a like a like probably a third-person action game. The pictures on the back don't do anything. They look basically just show cutscene stuff. No gameplay. But it just kind of looked funny to me, so that's why I wanted it. Uh, Never Dead, this is a horror comedy style game where you play as a corpse that has like the dual wields, but you can like, is this the one where you can rip your body parts off? If he can keep his head, maybe humanity has a chance. Yeah, I can't even read the damn type on here, it is so small. If I remember correctly, this one was a third person, like, shoot him up. And uh, you can like use your body parts, or like you can bl you can get blown up, and you can still go and fight and stuff like that with your body parts. And I remember somebody saying one person I remember watching on YouTube said it was pretty fun, and another said that it was garbage. But I found it for a few bucks at like a uh, I think it was the disc replay or whatever, so I picked it up. Still haven't played this, but I should. It's RPG year on the old ass retro gamer channel, which I've only started playing one RPG recently. Uh, I should have probably played through three or four of them by this point, but it hasn't happened because, you know, life sucks sometimes. But we're talking Nino Cooney, Wrath of the White Witch. This is the first game in the series. Took me forever to find a copy that is not the greatest hits version that has, like, the anime characters on the front. Um, I ran across this, I do believe, also at Disc Replay, which kind of surprised the hell out of me. But it's an RPG, or a JRPG, but all of the artwork is done by Studio Ghibli, the company that made anime movies like... Princess Mononoke and uh, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind and uh, Spirited Away, um, Ponyo, uh, you know, uh, tons of great ones. And that's why I wanted to play because the artwork looks, artwork looks absolutely stunning. And that's why I wanted it, but still haven't been able to set aside time to play it. I'm, I'm probably going to start a poll on my Facebook page. Which RPG should I start to play first? Or I mean, I'm playing one now, but it's not really a full-on RPG. It's kind of like an RPG mixed with this other genre. I'll bring it up. Later, I'm playing Golf Story. <laughs> uh, so which full-on RPG should I play? I'm going to put that on the list most definitely. Okay, here is Nier. Uh, we got a sequel to this called Nier Automata, which has become pretty damn popular. I did not think it would. I tried playing it, and I could not get into it to save my life, and that's why I never went back and played this one, because I was told you did not need to play this in order to play the second. And... Uh, I still need to go back and do it because I want to... Okay, so it was back in January. Church the Game Grinder and its Rocket Sauce from the Cartridge Club uh, came down to Chicago to not only hang out with me, but we all went to see a near concert in, Chica in uh, Chicago, right outside Chicago. 
And I'm just all about video game music, so I went, even though I was not a fan of Nier Automata, but I thought the music that I heard in it was pretty cool when I was playing it, so I was like, kind of like, I'm going to do this anyway, because I love video game music, and I loved it. The music is fantastic, beautiful, uh, the concert was amazing, it was fun, I got to hang out with some, some cool buddies, and made me really want to go and play this. Uh, so, it's a third person hack and slash, but it has like this really bizarre story, I don't think this one really has anything to do with what was in the second one. It just says, Uncover the truth behind the world of Nier through dozens of side quests and multiple endings. And yes, in this one, you have to play through the game, I guess, multiple times multiple times, just to get the full story like you do in Automata, which is another thing that kind of bugged me about Automata. So, I will eventually get around to playing that, but we'll see. Here's the only PS3 game that ever got released by Limited Run Games. Was it Oddworld Stranger's Wrath HD? I'm a huge Oddworld fan. This is the first-person shooter Oddworld game. It's still sealed. I have this for th two other consoles. I have it for the Vita and for the Xbox. But I love the franchise so much, I want to try to get like every game that's available for it, no matter what console it's on, even if I already do own it on another console. It's like one of the few franchises, uh, franchises I'm willing to do that for. But yeah, first-person shooter where you play as this hunter guy. And I remember it being pretty fun on the original Xbox, so why not? This one I played for a little while, but I kind of gave up on it because it's not nearly as good as Super Smash Brothers. And we're talking PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. This is Sony's answer to Super Smash Brothers by taking, like, uh, characters from all exclusive PlayStation franchises and having them fight each other in, like, an arena-style battle like in Super Smash. And this one has, like, the one of the Bioshock characters, like the big daddies from Bioshock, Nathan Drake, uh, Kratos... Um, Raiden from Revengeance, uh, Ratchet, Sly Cooper, Sackboy, Fat Princess, and Parappa the Rapper, and Jack from Jack, Jack and Daxter, Dante, which is not exclusive, the, one of the characters, the character from, um, oh, I can't remember that, superhero, left with an eye, ah, never mind, not important, uh, Hi Hachi, and one of the characters from Killzone, um, it's, it's fun, it's just not as well made as the Smash Brothers game. Like everything about, I mean, Smash Brothers is so well thought out and so well designed by HAL Laboratories. It's like you really can't really nitpick anything that's wrong with it. This one is just like characters are unbalanced and stuff like that. And it just doesn't play nearly as well as that does. But it's not bad. I actually do want to get the Vita version because this is something I would want to play on the go. So there's that. Now, yeah, that's probably one of the games I'll pick up. Uh, I'm I'm back into the game buying game right now. The game buying game, huh? Um, so maybe I'll look for the PS Vita version of that. Portal 2, this is the sequel to a game I first played on the Orange Box compilation that I have for the Xbox 360, which has Half-Life 2 on it, one of the Half-Life 2 second chapter things. Um, the first Portal and... Oh, God, what's the name of that first-person multiplayer thing? I can't remember what it's called. I never played it before. But it's a puzzle first-person shooter. It's kind of weird. Uh, you have a gun. I mean, everybody's played this, except for me. <laughs> uh, you have a gun that can open a portal, and then you have to shoot the gun in another direction to an exit point, and then as you pass through it, you'll come out on the other side. And, uh, it's yeah, it's like a puzzle game. And it's kind of fun. I remember liking the first game, but I because I never beat the first game, I never played this, but I... Picked this up pretty cheap at a uh, GameStop, so it's not like I bought this day one or anything like that. Uh, so, need to get around to playing through those two. I thought I didn't have this game. Someone was just asking me about this game at work. Oh, what the hell? Something on my tongue. Yeah, gross. Um, yeah, someone was just asking me about this at work if I had it. And I was also just talking about this to somebody else in one of my other streams. We're talking the reboot of Prince of Persia. I can't remember if it was on Tuesday or if it was last week. But it got brought up. Uh, yeah, it was Pete... Uh, Peter Bateman brought this up. I brought up... Yes, it was during the Xbox 360 streams. I brought up the Prince of Persia, the Forgotten Sands, which was came out after this, was to bring us back to what the uh, Sands of Time franchise was. There was three games released in that series. Then they rebooted it with this. It completely failed. And they were like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to go back to the other character from Prince of Persia that everybody likes, and everybody had given up on the franchise at that point. That's why we never got any new ones. Uh, but this one is the reboot. It's all cell shaded and it's just not Prince of Persia. It's just not fun at all. 
but I remember I picked this up first day, like day one when it came out originally. I played it for like two hours and I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> and I got rid of it. But then I found this super cheap at like a, a resale shop, so that's why I picked it up. But I should try it again, give it another shot. But Peter Bateman was like, yeah, that game is boring as hell. What's up, back in the day gamer? How's uh, how's it going, Tony? Welcome. What's happening, YouTube? I am talking about PS3 games today, dude. How's it going with you? Next up is Quantum Theory. Have not played this one yet, but looks like a third-person action beat 'em up type game. Uh, yeah, it looks like Gears of War actually. A dark, monstrous tower looms over a wasted world. A lone warrior, Sid, vows to destroy it once and for all. You do that. Shape-shifting battlefields, two-character combo actions, and team battle and deathmatch modes online. Okay, whatever. I just thought it looked kind of cool when I picked up the box at a store, so that's why I own it. <laughs> Need to get around to playing it. Yeah, we should be in Milwaukee. Like, seriously, I, right now, I would be packing. And I'd probably leave tomorrow morning around 11 o'clock to go to the convention. But the plague canceled our fun. It's a damn shame because... I was like, I need, I needed it. I needed the, I needed the Midwest Gaming Classic to happen. I really did, and it's, it, it's a super bummer that I'm not gonna be able to hang out with everybody this weekend. I was looking so forward to meeting everybody in person, like J Love and T Belly and everybody. It was just, it was gonna be so much fun, and I, I spent a lot of time trying to get that dinner off the ground, and then that blew up. Next year, next year, we'll double down. Next year, dude, we'll make the most of it. Uh, I had to repurchase Rage Anarchy Edition. I talked about this in the last PS3 stream that because of my PlayStation breaking down while I was unemployed in 2011, I sent it back to Sony for them to repair it. And the PlayStation 3, they sent me the same model. It was the original base or Model 1, the one that has the backwards compatibility in it. They sent me the same model, but the hard drive was so, so much smaller compared to the one that I owned. That I couldn't even download all the games that I had bought digitally at that point. And it could barely hold games that needed to be installed. Which is one reason why I started to shift from playing the PlayStation 3 exclusively to the Xbox 360. Because Xbox 360 games didn't need to be installed on the hard drive like the PlayStation 3 ones did for some reason. So uh, I had bought Rage. I played it for a little while. And I kind of got tired of it. It's a first person uh, post-apocalyptic Mad Max type game. It's actually really fun. But... New games were coming out that I wanted to play, and I needed to have hard drive space, so I had to delete my install of this, as well as my save, in order to play them, and I just got rid of this game because I'm like, there's better games I'm going to be playing. Uh, now, it's not a problem, so I need to play through it again. Or start, pick up where I left off. Hopefully, I didn't erase my save. I remember I had to erase the install. Hopefully, my save is still on my hard drive. I've been in Chicago now, then Galloping Ghost tomorrow morning. We're going to get drunk and go eBay crazy this weekend. I've already started that, dude. I bought something so big... Uh, it cost a ton of money last night. I was watching Musty Hobbit stream on uh, Twitch, and it reminded me that the thing he was playing last night was something I was going to be looking for at the convention if it was happening. Uh, so I just said, F it, and I went online and I picked it up, and it's really expensive and huge, and it's probably going to cost a ton to ship it, but we'll see. You'll see it at the end of the month in the new uh, pickup video live stream. So I picked this up at the GameStop at Gen Con. Uh, there was that one year when I went to Gen Con and there wasn't a whole lot going on in the way of video games at that time at the convention. They usually had a bunch in that consignment store where the auction was happening and I just ended up going to the GameStop in the mall that's connected to the convention center and bought a whole bunch of games and I picked up Ragnarok Odyssey Ace. It's a JRPG, which means I've never played it. <laughs> but it was a, this was dirt cheap. I remember I got this for like three or four bucks and that's why I picked it up. I was like, a JRPG by XC? Yeah! Uh, this is a franchise I didn't get into until the PlayStation 4, and it made me want to go out and buy all the other games in the franchise so I could play them, but I have, I think, all the ones for this generation? I have to check into it. We're talking Ratchet and Clank. I started playing the PS4 version, I absolutely loved it, it made me go see the movie and all that because I loved it so much, uh, but this is Ratchet and Clank, A Crack in Time, Ratchet and Clank Future, Tools of Destruction, and Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus. Uh, these are third-person action platformers, and it, if they're anything like the one that I played for the PlayStation 4, I'm going to absolutely love them, but I need to set aside some time so I can play through these. Future into the Nexus, yes. And the movie wasn't too bad. It could have been better, but it wasn't too bad. Here's another franchise I love, Rayman Origins. I uh, never played this one before, but I got Rayman... What's the newest one? 
God damn it. Rayman Legends. I started playing Rayman Legends and I absolutely loved it. And then it made me go, is there any other games in this franchise that I miss? And this was the one that came out right before Legends Origins. And it's in the same style. Uh, 2D platforming. Uh, really cool animation and everything. I absolutely love this game. Uh, Legends is way better. Origins was a good starting point. But I've, I've played the Rayman games since the original PlayStation. The original game. Hell yeah. Great franchise. I hope they keep going with it. Uh, here's another franchise of RPGs, and guess what? I've never played them. <laughs> uh, we got Record of Agarest War 2 and Record of Agarest War 0. More JRPGs. I don't remember where I bought these from. I think I got these in a lot on eBay somewhere. But whatever. Uh, I want to play them in order, so I have 0. I have 2. I need to get the first one, wherever I can get it from. I don't know. This goes this way. <laughs> Okay, stack two. So it took uh, this. Everybody had played this game prior to me. I'm the last person to ever play this game, but I wanted to wait for this complete edition to come out, and finally it did. But it became super hard to find at a decent price. I'm talking Red Dead Redemption, the original Red Dead Redemption. This is the Game of Year edition that has not only the core game, but also Undead Nightmare and all the multiplayer stuff, which I'm never going to use. But it's a uh, third-person Grand Theft Auto-style game in the Wild West, and that really sounds fun. But I, like I said, these games are really time-consuming, and I need to set aside some time to do it. Like Spider-Man on the PS4. How long did that take me to beat? Three months? Because, you know, finding the time to play it? Yeah. So, yeah. I definitely want to play this before I play Part 2. I haven't even purchased Part 2 yet. But, yeah. I won't purchase Part 2 until there is a complete version out there, if that even is going to happen. And this is the franchise I was playing when my PlayStation 3 broke while I was unemployed in 2011. I was playing the second game because I had plenty of time on my hands to play games now. So let's play through all those games I've been putting off playing. And I played through Resistance Fall of Man. And I was busy. I was in the middle of playing Resistance 2 when it crapped out. And then there's also Resistance 3, which is move compatible. And it's never been played because it's still sealed. But these are first-person shooters. I love me first-person shooters. And, uh, but this is like during, it's kind of like a ripoff of Gears of War. It's like the alien, aliens have invaded the, the earth and it's our job to run them off. And the first game is really, really fun. It gets really hard. And I was like in the middle of playing part two when my PS2 crapped out and I liked what I was playing. Only problem was when I had to send my PS3 out to get repaired, uh, they gave me a brand new PlayStation 3. So all my saves, everything on that hard drive was gone. Because it was a brand new PS2. So, honestly, I didn't feel like going back and starting over again. So, I didn't. I still need to play Part 3. I should probably play through Part 2. Finish it off. Resonance of Fate got this for, I think, 10 bucks at a half price books. But uh, it's another RPG, which means I haven't played it. <laughs> which is sad. Okay, so, I was in LA visiting my brother. And we went to a... Was it a Target, I think? Yeah, it was a Target uh, to do some grocery shopping for Christmas because my brother and my mother were going to be cooking dinner. And while they were off buying all the things that they needed, I'm like, I'm going to go check out the electronics department, see what they got in the way of games. And because oh, every store has different games on clearance. So the game that I found on clearance that I couldn't find anywhere near me is considered one of the worst games of all time. And that was why I said, I think I need this because it was like $3. And we're talking Ride to Hell Redemption. I hear this is the most broken glitchy game ever made it is just like god awful horrible which completely intrigued me and i said i needed to have it because i love playing a bad a really god awful terrible game and uh, i still haven't played it yet because it's sealed uh but it's a game it's like a third person game there's a lot of driving on a motorcycle but there's also beat em up aspects to it i watched uh i think pro jared do a review of this like years ago and uh yeah he said it was bad the completionist said it was bad everybody says this game is horrible I kind of want to play it and judge it for myself, but I do know it is probably going to be awful. Beyond awful. But uh, like, I love me a good B-movie. I love me a good terrible video game. Here's a franchise I'm probably going to play through this week. Or at least this week, uh, next week when I'm on vacation. And that is the Saw games. We got Saw and Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. Was talk excuse me, was talking to Jason of Corpse Flood Gaming about it. And he said that they were really short. So you could probably play through them in a day. Which is like, cool, I can knock some games off of my backlog. So, Saw and Saw 2 are um, adventure horror games, uh, and you basically go through and try to defeat traps that are set up to kill you. <laughs> and yeah, they are gory as hell, because in this one looks like, 
you have to take a scalpel and try to cut near your eye in order to get something out. Like in the second movie where the guy had to cut through underneath his eye to get a key out of his, uh, that was underneath his skin. So yeah, I look forward to trying these out finally. But I made damn sure that I got both of them. I absolutely had to. Found this at that disc replay before they closed, and I didn't know anything about it, but it's by Capcom, so I was like, okay, and I found out later, I think this is based off of an anime, which I've never heard of, and it's called Sengoku Basara Samurai Heroes, and it looks like Dynasty Warriors. It's just like a non-stop, crazy, wave after wave of bad guy beat up So, it looked intriguing to me, but I have not played it. It just says, thousands stand before you, thousands must die, from the creator of Devil May Cry 4. So... Yes. <laughs> Definitely need to try that. Definitely need to try this too. Shadows of the Damned. I think this is a pseudo, yeah, pseudo 51 trip, which means it's going to be absolutely psychotic. So it's a third person, uh, third person shooter, I guess, adventure game. It's a twisted psychological action thriller from the nightmare team of pseudo 51. Harness the power of the light to defeat the army of the dark. Visceral gut wrenching combat. Garcia Hotspur has killed one too many demons and pissed off the Lord of the Underworld. Now he's about to take one hell of a trip to rescue his kidnapped love in the City of the Damned. Hell yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people I know like, uh... Oh, jeez, she used to... Uh, I'm gonna be going crazy trying to remember her damn name. There was a YouTuber I used to watch, a female YouTuber, and she used to say that was like her favorite game. She was on my other show too. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, Sly Cooper Collection. Recently picked this one up because... I have not played a Sly Cooper game since the original on the PlayStation 2. It's going to drive me crazy trying to think of that girl's name. Erica. Oh, Erica something. Shit. Anyway. Um, loved the first Sly Cooper game. It was a third-person platformer stealth game. And you play as this raccoon, and he's like a thief. He has like a crew of people. There's like some driving stuff you have to do, too. And uh, it's really fun, but I never played any of the sequels. And this is actually a good way to do so. It's been remastered, so better play control, better graphics and everything. It's in widescreen, so why not? These are the kind of remasters I don't mind, because there was a huge jump in graphic quality between the PS2 and the PS3, so I understand that. But for PS3 to PS4, I don't see the point. But this is one of those remasters that I'm okay with. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. I still need to get Transformed, which is like the follow-up to this, where the cars can transform, obviously. It's in the title. Uh, but it's a kart racing game, kind of like Mario Kart with Sonic characters. But this is like the... Well, it's like Mario Kart, obviously. It's got all those different characters from Nintendo games. But it's kind of like the uh, Super Smash Brothers of kart racing games. It has, like, all the different Sega characters in it, like the character from Samba de Amigo. You got the Super... Monkey Ball character. You got Tails, Sonic, Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. So, it's really fun, actually. I played through this one a couple of times. I enjoyed it a lot. But I need to get transformed. I do have that for the Vita, and I liked what I played, so I need I need to get the complete console version. Sonic Generations. Um, I had been trying to pick this up for the longest time, but I could never find it for the PS3. I don't know why I was so, so dead set on getting it for the PS3. I don't know why. I can't tell you. But it's basically like Sonic going back in time and playing through his old games like modern day sonic going back to play his old stuff so um it says sonic two sonics two ways to play for the first time ever two sonics in one game a mysterious new power needs or sends sonic back in time where he runs into his original classic self now they must embark on the ultimate time bending adventure to defeat their enemies save their friends and find out who's behind it all and the thing about this is after playing sonic mania i was like i think this was a warm-up for that <laughs> but i need to play that more often Here's a compilation, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis con yeah, Connection Collection. <laughs> um, this is like a ton of Genesis games, but hidden within this are the arcade versions of some of the games that were ports of arcade games. So, you can play through the Genesis version of uh, Altered Beast, and I think if you meet certain criteria, you will unlock the arcade version of Altered Beast. Um... I did the same thing with, I think it was uh, Golden Axe. I beat Golden Axe, playing it two-player with a friend of mine, and I unlocked the original arcade version, if I remember correctly. Enhanced HD graphics, unlockable content, mega multiplayer fun. Yep. So it's got, it doesn't really have like a list on it, but you have like Fantasy Star, the Sonic games, the Shinobi games, Beyond Oasis, Ridge Star, Streets of Rage, Vector Man. Yes. <laughs> Kid Chameleon. Ooh. So, yeah, that's a great compilation right there. 
That's why I really haven't gone back and bought any more of these Sonic or Sega collections because I'm like, I have that one, I'm good with it. Oh, shit, I need to get this off the shelf. Be right back. So, I avoided buying this game for the longest time because I wasn't a big fan. I was a fan of the first game in the series. I was a fan of the second game in the series. I was not a big fan of the third game in the series. Four was fun, but it could have been better. So I avoided this game altogether. And then when I picked up the sixth game in the series, which came out like a year or two ago, I was like, okay, I need to go back and play the fifth game. And that is Soul Calibur V. <laughs> this is the collector's edition. I found this for like 20 bucks at a half price books. And what's so cool about it is it looks like a book on the outside. but And it actually is a book when you open it up. <laughs> it looks like a novel. Like an old school book, but it opens up. And not only do you have the making of Soul Calibur V on disc on the inside. Uh, it has like an art book on the inside. Hardbound. Which is pretty awesome. Have all the character artwork and all that. But it also comes with the soundtrack on disc. Which is great. And I was like, well if I'm going to get this game, which I've been putting off buying forever. This is definitely the way to do it. So I picked this one up. And... It also came with the game itself. And it's not too bad. Uh, it could have been better also. Part 6, I think, got the franchise back on the right track, as far as I'm concerned. But it's a pretty good beat-em-up, or sorry, fighting game. And I love the Soul Calibur. Like I said, the first two were fantastic. Four is good, but 6 is awesome. <laughs> 6 is fantastic. There's so much extra content in that game. Oh, my God. South Park, The Stick of Truth. Here's an RPG I actually have played. <laughs> Um, it's like playing, it's like a, it's like a, uh, RPG on training wheels. It's like playing Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. It's like an easy RPG that even a kid could get into. It's not too complicated, not too deep, but there's also a lot of other things you can be doing in the game. There's like those Chimpokomon you can look for and uncover in the backgrounds and the, uh, overworld and all that. It is super fun. It is like playing an interactive episode of the TV show. It's the same exact humor. The graphics look just like the cartoon. Uh, the characters are all voiced by the same people. It is absolutely fantastic. And it is a complete shame that I have not played the follow-up yet. But I was under the assumption there was going to be like a complete version of that coming up. Because there was a lot of DLC for this. And uh, I never downloaded any of it. So I was assuming the same thing for that. And it didn't happen. So I should just probably go out and buy it then, shouldn't I? That one. Okay, so this one's all about the kids pretending they're in The Lord of the Rings. The follow-up is all about the kids thinking they're in Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fantastic as some of the nastiest shit going on ever. The, that, there's that level where you're inside Big Gay Al's ass or whatever it was, or the bad guy's ass or something. And there's also that part where, like, you can unlock Big Gay Al as... Or no, it's, uh, sorry, it's uh, the slave guy. The guy in the slave, leather slave outfit. Or, the no, the guy that was banging the slave. Mr. Slave, or whatever. And he, like, sits on your enemy and, like, puts them in his butt. It creeped me out that that happened. <laughs> What's up, 8-Bit Glitch? How is it going? Fun-ass game, though. I, I need to get the sequel. Oh, I thought I put your... Hang on. I thought I put it in an area you could see it, but apparently not. I'll fix that. 8-Bit Glitch's little, little gift to me. There it is. <laughs> I'm actually watching the stream right now, and I was like, it's, this is a big lag, so it's like a good 20 seconds behind. Anyway, Spec Ops The Line. It's a first-person shooter RPG, if I remember correctly. Metal Jesus talked about this in a video, and I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Um, it's the premium edition. comes with a FUBAR pack, which I'm assuming is a lot of multiplayer stuff. But from what he said, this was like a first-person RPG, and I was like all about it. Still haven't played it yet, though. But it looked pretty rad in his video, so I said yes. Uh, I bought this because of Radical Reggie. Uh, I picked this up first day, day one, back in the day when it first came out. But I bought the Ultimate Edition or whatever it was called. And I changed my mind on it before I even got home. I was just kind of like, I don't know about this. Because money was tight back then. And I was like, do I really need this game right now? No, I don't. So I turned around and took it right back to the GameStop. We're talking Spider-Man 3. And I bought the Special Edition that was like the Venom version. So the cover was like all the, the black Spider-Man suit. And uh, I should have kept it, because <laughs> that one's kind of hard to find. Uh, but this is the standard edition. Radical Reggie said that the version that I bought had a couple of extra missions, and there was, like, these ones where you're trying to scare Mary Jane as, like, the Venom 
version of Spider-Man or the black suited version, Dark Spider-Man. Uh, but yeah, it's like playing the Spider-Man 1 and 2 that's on the original Xbox or PS2 or whatever, uh, just with better graphics and all that, and based on that shit-tastic movie, Spider-Man 3. Which is why I didn't want it, because I saw the movie and I was like, I don't know if I really want this. Yep, there it is. Hanging out in the back. <laughs> uh, thanks again for that, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, Star Ocean, The Last Hope International. This is also available on the 360, which I do have. The international version is like the uncut version. Like, there was stuff cut out for the States you know, censoring, whatever. Uh, but it's another game in this long-running sci-fi RPG series, which I have not played because I want to start at the beginning before I play the games at the end. And I think there's two games on the PS4 in this series now. And I might have just gotten something specifically old for this con there's a franchise in the mail today. You'll see it in the end of the month at the pickup video, and I think you'll be like, ooh, where can I get that too, Chris? This, I did not even know existed. How do I not, how did I not know that this existed? But I found this at Half Price Books, and I was like, yes, please. It's Tekken X, sorry, Street Fighter X Tekken. Street Fighter versus Tekken. Uh, that's insane. Where? Why did I not hear of this? And I think there's like a better edition of this out there. There's like a one, like a super version of it, like, you know, Super Street Fighter 2 kind of thing. But Street Fighter characters versus, Te versus Tekken characters... The fighting styles in those two games are completely opposite of one another. One's like all technical and one is like all, you know, special moves shit. Uh, yeah, I still haven't tried it out yet because I heard once I bought this that there was like the better version out there. So I might go looking for that, see what happens. But the idea intrigued the hell out of me of all the franchises. I would love to see Tekken versus uh, Soul Calibur. That would be awesome. Here's one of the few imports I have for the PS3. Strider. Got this straight from Japan via Amazon. So Strider was a reboot of the franchise on the PS3, but it was a digital-only game in the U.S. In Japan, they got it on physical media, and there is DLC available for this. I have the code for it, but I need a Japanese PSN account in order to uh, redeem it, which is probably not going to happen. But it's kind of like they took, they took Strider and they kind of turned it into a Metroidvania in a way. Uh, there's a lot of backtracking involved. And it's pretty fantastic. I downloaded the demo of it. And I played through the demo probably five or six times. I had so much fun doing it. But then I, that was kind of when I got into the mindset that I don't like digital games. So I, unless it came out on physical, I was not going to download the full game ever. Uh, but then got back into collecting and found out that this was a thing. And got it for I think around $35 off of Amazon, which is pretty damn good. So I still need to beat the entire game, but I played through a little bit of it when it showed up, and I was like, oh, I missed this game so much. And here we have, like, we're just talking about that Street Fighter X Tekken. Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. God, how many versions of Street Fighter 4 did they release? And I was a dumbass, and I kept buying each one, thinking it was going to be the final version of it, and then no, another one will come out six, six, eight months later. And the same thing's happening with 5. I thought I'd I thought I had purchased the final version of five and then there's like a different version that just came out not too long ago but this is the final version of super street fighter or sorry street fighter five or four and it's pretty good um i love me a good street fighter game and this one was pretty fantastic i still need to play part five though uh but yeah this is the last version <laughs> remember that because i think there was a super street fighter four and then they released like this arcade edition of it and i was like oh jesus when is it gonna stop i think they released like five versions of that game uh, here's one of this, well, here's another JRPG, part of a super long-running series I'll probably never get around to playing unless I can find the original somewhere. And we're talking the Tales of series, this is Tales of Zillia 2. Um, I think this is one of the ones that Church likes. Church kind of, like, doesn't like this franchise, but likes certain games in the franchise. I can't remember if this was one of the ones he did like or not, but it looks pretty cool, but unless I get the other games in the franchise, I can't play it, because I want to play them in order. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Danger of the Ooze. This is a beat-em-up, if I remember correctly. Side-scrolling beat-em-up. This is a fighting game. Switch between them on the fly. I think this is a beat-em-up. I picked up a whole bunch of Turtles games at the same time. And I lost track of every one of them. I bought like the Battle Nexus one and the ones that's on the Xbox and the three, uh, PS2 and all that. And I think I got this at the exact same time. And I still haven't played this one. But it comes with... What is this? A catalog? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. It still has the toy catalog inside it. Oh lord. 
And, yeah, this is why I stopped collecting action figures. Look at that. Look at that crazy amount of characters. And it's probably everything you can... Kirky Bat. Kirby Bat? Metalhead? Ralph the Barbarian? Mikey the Elf? Oh, Jesus. Power Sound Effects Shredder. Baxter Stockman in Robot Suit. Cockroach Terminator. No, I'm good. <laughs> I remember the reason why the franchise lost steam in the 90s was because they just kept releasing crazy amounts of characters that nobody could keep... We couldn't keep up with it. I remember at least my brother couldn't. But yeah, haven't tried it yet, so... Uh, I'm not a fan of this franchise, but I do try to be. I want to be. Uh, I can't seem to be, but uh, I think a new there's a new one on the PS4. Uh, we're talking the Tekken franchise. I... I'm not a big Tekken fan because it's like technical fighting and it's all about countering and timing and all this kind of stuff and I kind of suck at it but I want to be good at it so I keep buying some of the games to try them out and be like am I good at it now now that I've played better fighting games and no I'm still pretty bad at it I don't know why I just can't get into this franchise but here's part six and I think the the newest one is part seven on the PS4 here's a license game Jason of Corpse Play Gaming said that this one was decent because it's a franchise that he absolutely loves I love it too don't get me wrong we're talking Terminator Salvation. I hate the movie. Absolutely hate it. Ruins the franchise as far as I'm concerned. But he says the game is not too bad. It's a third person action game. What's up T-Belly? Collection hype! What's going on? T-Belly is in the building. <laughs> uh, still haven't played it though. But I'm about to finish off Terminator Resistance on the Xbox One. So I will probably get back to playing that. Another Marvel game, we got uh, Thor God of Thunder. This is not developed by WayForward like the Nintendo DS version, which is absolutely fantastic. That's a diamond in the rough Nintendo DS game if there ever was one. Um, but this one is just a third person beat him up as, as Thor. And it's fun. It's not too bad. Could have been better, but I'm not complaining. Uh, Time and Eternity, I don't know why I bought this. I found this at GameStop for like $5. And I was like, ooh, another JRPG. I'll probably never get around to playing because I have not played it. There you go. On the stack you go. <clears throat> How's it going, T-Belly? Did you beat, uh... Did you beat, uh... Game, or, uh the Game Boy version of Battletoads? I go to let the chickens in for the night and T-Belly's here. Having <laughs> some Mickey versus Victory Meal. Oh, so you take it, you did beat it. <laughs> uh, we got the Tomb Raider Trilogy. So... I loved the original Tomb Raider game. I really, really loved Tomb Raider 2 on the PS1. Three kind of started to lose me, and then they released, like, the, the Last Revelation, and then Chronicles, and I was just like, oh, I'm so done with this. And then the Angel of Darkness just killed the franchise for pretty much everybody. Then Tomb Raider Legend came out on the original Xbox, and I played the crap out of it. I absolutely loved it. It was like, okay, Tomb Raider's back. And then they released Tomb Raider Underworld, which is the follow-up to that. And then they did a remaster, sort of, of Tomb Raider, the original one. They called it Tomb Raider Anniversary. And I had bought each of these games separately and played through Tomb Raider Legend and Tomb Raider Underworld. Absolutely loved them. Uh, but Tomb Raider Anniversary kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It just didn't feel right after playing through the newer games. Playing it by, uh, a Tomb Raider game by the old rules again with the, like, the better graphics just kind of was like, eh. <laughs> but I, wanted, I had them all separately, but to get them together on one disc is better. At least for my collection space. It was tough. Forgot there was a second series of Tomb Raider games. And here's another compilation. The Splinter Cell Trilogy. Here's a, a franchise that I tried to get into back in the day. What is up, Waves and Games? Yeah, there's there's how many trilogies? There's the, Well, there's the original series on the PS1. And then there's those. And now there's the new trilogy, which are absolutely fantastic. Um, Splinter Cell was a game I picked up the original on the Xbox. And it's, like, it's a stealth third-person game. And I like Metal Gear or Metal Gear Solid, so I was like, this should be pretty cool, and I just couldn't get into it for some reason, but I found this compilation dirt cheap, and I was like, I should probably give it a try again, my tastes have changed, so I should probably give it a second try, especially that it's been redone in HD graphics. Uh, here we go, this one has a special box to it, let's, let's bring it back together again. Uh, Trials, yeah, Trails of Cold Steel, or the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. Uh, Falcom, the developers of the Ease games. That's why I wanted this game, but it's an RPG. Um, still haven't played it. It's still sealed. But it comes in this... I bought the version that came in this like really cool outer box. And the reason it's in this huge box and has a lot of empty space is because 
You're supposed to fit the second game in the series in here as well, so you can have them all in one place. Now there's a third game in the series, and that doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> but it came with this art book, which is pretty fantastic. I mean, this box itself is beautiful. Like, it's all metallic and everything. And then it also comes with this, like, tchotchkes thing. What's in there? A button. Yay. <laughs> so how's everybody holding up in the craziness that is the world nowadays? Everyone's staying safe, not doing anything stupid. But RPG, haven't gotten around to playing it. It's still sealed. You know that. If you're spending time killing people and hiding their bodies. <laughs> I just remember, like, always getting caught. Like, there, uh, there was obviously a path I was supposed to be on in order to get past some people. And no matter what I did, what I tried, whatever my tactics were, I always ended up getting seen. And I just got frustrated and stopped playing it. And I was like, I don't think this game is for me. Anyway. So I picked these up so I could talk about them in a video that I did with Captain Foley from the Trek Yards YouTube channel. Because he absolutely, on top of loving Star Trek, he loves Transformers. So I tried to buy as many Transformers games as I possibly could so I would have something to talk about. Because at the time we were going to do the video, I only had like three Transformers games in my collection. And we're each going to talk about three games. I'm like, well, I'm I, I only have these three games to talk about. I need to have more. So I picked up the ones based on the movie. So we got Transformers The Game, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and Transformers Dark of the Moon for the first trilogy of Transformers films. And... The first game is not the greatest. It's a third-person game. Transforming and racing around, whatever. It's all right. Revenge of the Fallen is not too great. I'm not a fan of that movie. But Dark of the Moon is probably the best of the three. And it's probably the best of these three movies, in my opinion, too. Uh, but yeah, it's basically a third-person racing game and beat-em-up. But it's fun. They're, they're fun to have. They got them all dirt freaking cheap. My, de my work desk has a pyramid of soda cans. That's how my quarantine's going <laughs> Uh, I got paid to watch uh, Tiger King today. I basically watched the entire series, the entire first season or of the entire show. I watched the first five episodes at work today. I got paid to do it. Yeah. Uh, the reboot of Twisted Metal. This game is absolutely fantastic. I wish they would bring this franchise back. I love vehicular combat games because of the original Twisted Metal on the PS1. Holy crap that I sync time so much time into the first two games in that series. And then when Twisted Metal Black came out on the PS2, you have no idea. I played that game over and over and over. And then this, which is also, I do believe, online in some capacity. Yeah, multiplayer, online multiplayer. Uh, this game is absolutely fantastic as well. I wish that they would bring back this franchise so bad. So, so bad. There's another awesome franchise. One of my favorite platforming franchise ever, or adventure platforming, whatever you want to call it. We got the, the Uncharted games. We got Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, which is my favorite game in the franchise, and Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. The first game, a friend, my friends bought this for me for Christmas, and I was like, eh, whatever. And I played through it, and I was like, this game is absolutely fantastic. I love these characters. I love the gameplay. I love everything about it. And Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider games, really stole from this series. <laughs> but Drake is a fantastic char character. I absolutely love Elena and Sully. And it's great. But the second one just improves on it in every way possible. The gameplay is way improved. The characters, the storyline is just absolutely fantastic. And, like, honestly, this is one of the few games that actually brought me to tears in a little way. In, a little way, uh, yeah, in one specific point. Oh, God, the whole Elena might possibly be dead twist that they had. Like, I was like, no, no, <laughs> I love Elena. And then part three really disappointed me because it, like, didn't, it was supposed to be the final game in the series and it just didn't feel like there was any finality to it. It was like they're just stringing me along to release another friend or another sequel at some point. And I was like, just end it before you drag this out to the point where it becomes bad like the Tomb Raider games. And this game just kind of bored me. And I thought the ending was extremely underwhelming. Not to say it's bad, it's just not my favorite. Part 4, though, is fantastic. It's probably my second favorite game in the series. Hey, what's up, Tim? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. This I picked up because of Pete Dore. This is a port of a Dreamcast game we never got over here in the U.S. Uh, and, but then, for some reason, they just, the company decided to release it on the PS3 in an HD revamp. So, we're talking under defeat HD the deluxe edition. It's a uh, vertically scrolling shmup 
where you play as a helicopter. But the thing about it is you can't shoot straight ahead. You can only shoot in angles. And there's like one button that will sh will change the orientation of your helicopter. So you're either in one corner shooting diagonally to the opposite kitty corner and the other side. And you can swap between them to kind of shoot straight up in a way as you're shifting position. It's weird, but it works. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's hard as balls, though, I will admit. Um, I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic shmup. Really unique. Uh, I bought this because of Radical Reggie. He told me about it. And we're talking on Facebook, like through Facebook Messenger. And he sent me this picture of this fighting game because he knows I love my fighting games. And he's like, look, dude, you need to get this in your collection, but it's super hard to find in box. Like, it's, like every GameStop you go to, all they ever have is just the disc. But I ended up like going, well, challenge accepted. Called the GameStop by my work. And of course, they had a copy of it in case with the manual and everything. So we're talking... Undernight in birth, EXE late. I don't know what the hell any of that means. <laughs> but it's a uh, hand-drawn animation fighting game, one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Kind of like Blaze Blue or uh, Guilty Gear. And it's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love it. And there's a sequel to this on the PS4, excuse me, which I need to get, which I think I have to order through uh, PlayAsia. Um, Untold Legends Dark Kingdoms. Is there two in this series? No. Uh, yeah. Um, there's a, this was a series I think started on the PSP and then it continued on the PS3. And I played the PS3. It's like a dungeon crawler beat em up. And it's fun. I just haven't gotten around to playing this one yet. But I've played the PSP games and they were pretty enjoyable, if not a little basic. But I assume that on the PS3 it's going to be expanded a lot. So there's that. Valkyria Chronicles. This is an RPG that has become extremely expensive. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's like a lot of tank battles and stuff like that in it too. I had, I just bought Valkyria Chronicles 2 on the PSP and I know a lot of people were looking for that because it became super popular. They released like a remaster, I think of this on the modern day consoles or whatever. Haven't gotten around to playing it yet because it's an RPG. Here's the other import that I have. Uh, picked this up because I hadn't played any game in this series in a long time. I have the... Second game on the Saturn, which is great, uh, but it's another fighting game from Capcom. This one in Japan, it's called Vampire Resurrection. This is actually Darkstalkers Three. Uh, it's been revamped for HD. Uh, you can play it in widescreen, but it actually stretches the characters out so they look a little flatter. It's actually really, really cool. It it has the it has Vampire Hunter Three or Darkstalkers Three on it. Also has the second game on here too as an unlockable, which is great. I love Darkstalkers. That's one of my favorite. I'm a, I'm a big horror fan. So being able to play as like Dracula or Dracula Substitute and Frankenstein and a mummy and all that kind of stuff is fantastic. And it's a great Capcom fighting game. I absolutely love it. This just got remastered for the PS4. Here's another one. I don't understand why. Uh, it doesn't need a huge graphical overhaul. And I don't understand. I thought this game was kind of a bomb. But Vanquish. This is by... Is this Platinum? Yeah, Platinum Games. Um, I think it was Bayonetta and Vanquish on the same disc. What's up, TJ? How's it going? Okay, back to work. Oh, I'll miss you, Peter. Come back soon. Bye. <laughs> Pete's awesome. Um, yeah, it's a third-person shooter game, but like it has this like sliding mechanic. I remember I rented this from the library by my work, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, but I don't think this was requiring, or anyone was really asking for a remaster of this for the PS4 or whatever. But I might get it, just so I can have a remaster of Bayonetta. But it's pretty awesome. Got this for like two bucks at the... Uh, what's it called? The disc replay while I was there. Never even heard of it. But I was like looking at the back of it. I'm like, eh, all right. Uh, it's called Venetica. Never heard of it. Still haven't played it. It just says on the back, Only the truly worthy can journey to death itself and back again. In a fantastical Venice, the beautiful Scarlet is discovering her dark fate. She is the daughter of death. And she has been called upon to defend her father against a cunning ne necromancer. Tragedy strikes and she must truly discover the depths of her new powers if she is to save her father and the world. A visually stunning cinematic RPG with a truly unique atmosphere. Master the use of the Twilight World and the ultimate powers of death. Conquer a host of nightmare creatures in action-packed battles. And Venetica is a vast open, ga open game world busting with or bustling with life. It's an RPG. God damn it. Another RPG. I didn't even realize. I thought this was a beat em up of some kind. <laughs> Haven't played it. Uh, this is based off of a movie that's based off of a comic book. 
And everybody likes the comic book and doesn't like the movie. I like them both. Uh, but we're talking Wanted, Weapons of Fate. This is more based on the comic book than the movie. Uh, because in the movie, the main character does not dress up like this. Because in the movie, or in the comic book, he's a supervillain. <laughs> uh, yeah, w uh, Wanted, where you can curve bullets and you can definitely do this in the game. It is absolutely fantastic. It's a third-person cover-based shooter a little bit. Kind of like uh, Gears of War. But you have the bur bleh, can't talk bullet curving mechanic, which is pretty awesome. And I played the demo of this on my PS3, and I absolutely loved it, but I never ended up buying it back in the day. I just totally forgot about it. And when I got back into collecting, I found this at Half Price Books for a couple bucks, and I says, oh, yes, that. And, yeah, I need to play through it completely. I played it a little bit when I first got it, and I was like, yes, this. I remember why this was so awesome. I need to finish it, though. Ooh, my throat's getting so dry. This is another awesome one that nobody seems to talk about. Wet. The sequel should have been called Moist. It would have pissed everybody off. Ha ha! <laughs> um, it's a third-person action game. Uh, you, you play as the main character who is voiced by Eliza Dushku, who played Schwarzenegger's daughter in True Lies and was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer as Faith. Uh, she does a great job. Lots of snark. But she's an assassin, a hit woman. And there's a lot of really cool mechanics. You, I can't remember exactly what it was. The acrobatic stuff, I remember that. Three types of gameplay, 360 degree slip slip aiming, gun targeting system, sword fighting, and acrobatics. I just remember her flipping all over the place. And it's fantastic. I remember loving the shit out of it, but I got distracted by another game, as always happens. I'm really freaking uh, ADHD when it comes to video games, apparently. And I moved on to something else and never went back to it. I really should. And when I bring my PS3 out of mothballs this week, it's probably going to happen. Picked this up while I was at Gen Con at the GameStop there. The White Knight Chronicles 2. It's another RPG. Haven't played it. But the reason I picked this up was because it includes the original White Knight Chronicles on it. So I didn't have to have two different games on the shelf. I just had the one. So there's that. This franchise. Oh, this franchise. Yes, please. Um, so I rented XCOM Enemy Unknown from the library. And uh, the library by where I work. And I absolutely loved it. Like... You have, you rent the games there and you have a week to return them. I think I kept it for like three weeks. I played it so much and I absolutely loved it. But I never got around to buying a copy of it until I got back into collecting. And I found this at Target on clearance for a whopping $7.48. <laughs> and I haven't opened it because I would never gotten back into it. Because at the time I rented this, there were no sequels to it. I wanted to get the all the sequels before I ended up playing through it, because I wanted to play through them all in a row, which leads me to XCOM Enemy Within. This is the Commander Edition. And there's also the Bureau XCOM Declassified, which is the third game in the series, which I talked about last week. And I absolutely love these uh, strategy games, strategy tactic games. Uh, now that I have them all, it reminds me I need to get off my ass and play through them. Um, I have a real cool, a funny story about this. It took me... Oh, Jesus... Bought it, uh, I bought, what was it, WarioWare for the Wii at a GameStop. They forgot to put the disc in it. So I went back to the store. This is a store that's in, like, the downtown, not downtown, like the South Chicago area. It's kind of a nasty area. I went there because they had a copy of Pikmin 3 on the uh, Wii U. And it was getting really hard to find because they had just discontinued it. Or Nintendo had just discontinued the game. And everybody was selling it, like, for, like, triple the price on eBay. But this one specific GameStop that was like in the Southern Illinois, or not Southern Illinois, the South Side, had it in stock and it was still the regular price. So I went down there to get it and I picked up some other games while I was there, one of which was this WarioWare game. They didn't put the disc in it, went back there the next day to have them put the disc in it, and they're like, oh, we don't have the disc. I'm like, then why was the case even on the, sh on the shelf? Like, that makes no sense. So the guy's like, you want to pick out something else? So I did. They had for the Wii, um, what was it, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles? And I was like, oh, that's the one I need to complete this, you know, uh, set for the Wii. So I picked it up. The guy, you know, switches it out. You know, he exchanges it for me. And as I'm walking out, I'm on my way to my car. I was like, I should probably check. And I open it up, and he put the Umbrella Chronicles in the case, which is the other game in that series for the Wii. So I walk back in, and I, like, throw it on the counter. I was like, this time you put the wrong disc in it. Because it was the same guy that rang me up the day before with the and didn't, forgot to put the disc in it. I'm like, this is the wrong game. You just put the wrong game in it in front of my face. And he looks at it and he goes, huh, so I did. 
oh, well, we don't actually have this game in stock either. I'm like, why are you putting these these cases on the shelf if you don't have the damn game? And he kind of goes, you want to exchange it for something else? I go, I swear to God, if I pick up a game and I bring it up here and you don't have it in stock, I'm like, there's going to be hell to pay. I'm like, I'm calling corporate. And he went like, yeah, okay. And I went and I picked up XCOM Enemy Within. And I plopped it down in front of him. And I watched him put the disc in it. And I opened it in front of him. I was like, okay, right game. I was like, but guess what? I'm never coming back to this store ever again. And he went, have a nice day. And I was like, you guys, you guys suck. <laughs> like, so bad. I've been to way better GameStops in my day. That's the, the one on the south side was the absolute worst. Uh, and then talking about worst, everyone tells me this game is absolute trash. Uh, that's why I haven't opened it yet, but it's called Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. And this is the special edition. It has a Dark Horse comic in it. The original soundtrack with digital code. Costume DLCs for use in Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. What? Anyway, this is a Ninja Gaiden game, and it is a... 3D beat em up just like the ones for this generation were. Except this one is about all you do is take out zombies. <laughs> so Ninja Gaiden Zombie Edition. And I never opened it because everybody tells me that it plays like ass. It's like really, really bad. And I was like, well, I love me some Ninja Gaiden. Uh, maybe just keep this for the collection. But I should open it and play for it. Or play it. You know what? You know what? You know what? The hell with it. It's gonna, it's good. Let's do it. Let's open this up. Come on, you're gonna play it. I'm gonna play it this week, and I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna absolutely love it. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Captain Algebra, eat your heart out. I unpackaged my games too, goddammit. <laughs> New game smell, and the game falls out. See, it's, it's meant to be. Oh, it's because the, the case is broken. Fantastic. Shit. <laughs> uh. I'm not crazy. Anyway, awesome franchise here. Um, I was trying to get all of them at the one specific time in my collecting, and I couldn't get the second game because it had been discontinued early or whatever, and it became super, really, really hard to find. It was really expensive. But I had every other game in the franchise, and I was just kind of like, I just can't play through these games because these come after that one for the PS2 that I couldn't find. Uh, we're talking the Yakuza games. we got Yakuza 3. Yakuza 4, we never got part 5 for the PS3 like they did in Japan. We had to import it. And then there's the black sheep in the series, and that's Yakuza Dead Souls. So, Yakuza 2 on the PS2, like, I don't know, I don't think it had a huge run. And it was really hard to find. I had found a copy of it at one of the exchanges that's near me. And they wanted like $110 for it or something. I was like, F you in the A. There is no way in hell. Uh, but then eventually they re-released it like five or six years ago and like dropped in price dramatically. And I got it for like the normal going rate for a brand new PS2 game, which is pretty awesome. And then I didn't even need to do that because they remastered it on the PS4. Yeah. But yeah, Yakuza 3 and 4, third person, beat em ups with lots and lots of story in it. And then Yakuza Dead Souls is the Yakuza formula with the beat em up and everything, but it's all about fighting zombies. What is it with like these games with zombies you got ninja gaiden with zombies you got yakuza with zombies what the hell but yeah this one isn't considered part of the canon at all but it's good to have and then we have x blades i don't know why i bought this i think i got it for like a dollar somewhere but it's like a 3d beat em up and i remember somebody telling me that it was okay and then another person told me that it was crap but like i said i found it for like a dollar at uh, the uh, what was it the uh disc exchange or the disc replay place I was just kind of like, for a buck, who cares? But I still haven't gotten around to playing it. And the last game that I have for the PlayStation 3 is X-Blaze Code Embryo. This is a... This is the fighting game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But for some reason, they're not showing fighting game stuff. No, it's an intense adventure game whose story is intertwined. That's why... I wanted to get this because I love the Blaze Blue games, the one on one fighting games, the animated ones. This is like the adventure version of it. <laughs> and it says it's connected to the series, but this is like a side scrolling or 3D adventure game version, uh, which is interesting. I need to play this. I knew there was a reason I bought this, <clears throat> but I haven't played it yet, so there's that. And that's it for my PlayStation 3 collection. I'm just trying to take one last look around to see if there's anything that I forgot to bring down for the console. I don't think so. Nope, I brought the other stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's it for the PS3. That is my PlayStation 3 collection. Good, bad, you be the judge. I think I 
got some cool stuff in here somewhere. Especially the, the Metal Gear Legacy Collection. That is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, but next week I'll be back with another uh, video game collection live stream. And that's going to be for the Wii U. Yes, the Wii... No. No. Hmm. How about it's about... Oh, no, we're going to go handheld. That's why. Okay, I remember there's a reason. Why. Okay, so it's going to be about the PS Vita and the Nintendo 3DS combined because I don't have huge collections for either console, so I'm just going to mash them up into one video. It's going to be interesting <laughs> because my Vita collection is mostly limited run stuff and my Nintendo 3DS collection is mostly Nintendo stuff. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. Then we'll get into the Wii U after that. But yeah, stop back next Thursday for that live stream. That'll be pretty interesting, like I said. And now that I'm on vacation for the next week and a half, I can start working on some uh, edited content, like that uh, Top 10 NES games that uh, video that I did in response to Captain Algebra. also have a new collaboration in the works, the fifth version of uh, video games that would make great movies, or movies that would make great video games. I'm trying to get a lot of YouTubers in there, but people aren't making it easy <laughs> to actually get them involved so this is going to be a real troubling one this is going to this is why it takes me a year to do these comp these uh collaboration videos um also have the uh licensed games diamonds in the rough video which i have shot i just need to edit it together as well as the retron 77 review and plus i have a whole lot of other content planned i'm not just me this is not just a live streaming channel and all that and don't forget i'm probably going to live stream on twitch next week at some point i finally have a laptop that can run stream labs so there's that so keep an eye on my twitch channel just look up the old ass retro gamer as all one word also don't forget to check out my podcast that i do with jason of corpse flood gaming over on his channel the super enabler brothers show so go to corpse flood gaming's channel and there's two episodes of that so far and they are interactive so you can join in the fun with us so go check those out as well so until next time thank you every single person for coming tonight i really appreciate it I was getting worried the last couple live streams that I've done, like my pickup video and the one from the PS3 version or PS3 video from last week, like nobody showed up for the chat, which was very disheart disheartening. But today to see everybody showing up, hells to the S. So thank you everybody for coming. I hope to see you again next week. Chris, the old ass retro gamer, signing off. Stay safe, everybody. Don't go licking any toilet seat.